Okay, hi there traders and welcome to Trade the Structure, another morning jumpstart macro view. So we just take a look at uh, obviously coming to the Asian market session. We're going to take a look at what happened overnight in the US markets uh, and just look at some key levels where we can get some trades and what sort of price action I expect to play out uh, going forward. Now, if anyone's trading tonight, remember the US payrolls, that's the biggest number. Okay, US employment data or payrolls, we call it is out tonight just before the US open. So it's at 12.30 Sydney time, an hour before they open. Uh, so just be wary that that could really create some uh, volatility. So if you get into positions beforehand, yeah, just take take care that they will chop around if the number comes out a lot different than expected. Okay, so we'll get on to what happened overnight. We've got the Aussie market. So you can see it opened up, it sort of grinded, sorry, it opened up around here, grinded down most of the sort of session, but held on to the gains from the previous night. Okay, so the ASX and the SPY are doing most of their work outside of ours. So they're, they're ramping up. The, um, so if they ramps up overnight, the ASX is lifted over um, during the day session and sort of chops around and then it ramps down like the last night. And then the ASX is going to open down uh, today. So it's depending on whether we get some bargain hunting, but I don't expect there's going to be too many people adding risk to portfolios or anything like that. Coming into one, the weekend, and coming into like the unknown of what happens with Russia and Ukraine, that could kick off harder. You've got two days of doing nothing while your, your potential um, portfolio is sinking. And you've got the US payrolls, which is, like I said, it's a big number, and there's still a lot of focus. Uh, so some of the movements on the NASDAQ, the down movements on the NASDAQ, the Dow didn't do too bad. It was down a few points, but the NASDAQ was down, say, 2%, I think, um, overnight. And that's more based around inflation. So you've got inflation concerns continue to go up. You've got oil, you know, it did come off last night, but it's up at, you know, high, uh, really high for, since the last, I don't know, few months or years or so. It's hidden highs of 110, which it hasn't seen that for a long time. So that's adding to the inflation fears. That's adding to uh, rate rise pressures, uh, all that sort of stuff. So that's keeping, I think, what keeping the market down. And so what we've seen that reaction to the Ukraine, uh, the issues with Russia and Ukraine, that reaction down, starting to find a base. But then this continued pressure more from inflation problems, okay, and increased inflation problems. So Aussie market, you can see a big sell-off from 71.43. This is on the SPY. Big sell-off, uh, that's the start of the US session, and then it held at 70.90. So really, we've got a little base, a low here, retested the low into the close, even flushed that low before we had a bit of a bounce at 70.53. So it's whether we do the same sort of thing, we ramp up, um, which it could do, you don't expect the market to ramp up when the US has been down, but it's done that a lot of times in the previous uh, previous sessions. US can get smacked overnight and we actually provided, for whatever reason, we decided to ramp up. So it could easily do that and break through 70.90. So these are the two key levels for me today. Uh, if you're going to work a short off here, you can flush and get a lower high like this, or we get that sort of flush, hold a higher low, and we're going to go to a higher level. Or we just you know roll over from there into the weekend. Uh, over to um, Asian markets. So we start off the Hang Seng got dumped on the open of the US session as well. And the same with the Nikkei, dumped. And then we just sort of continued to remain under pressure. Okay, so we've got a lower high was confirmed, had a bit of a push through these lows at 2208. So pretty much the same as what we saw in the ASX. So for me, this is the, the key level today, whether we continue on down. Um, but if we're going to continue down today, I would expect a bit of a, a pop up. Uh, Hang Seng loves to do that, drag in some buyers and then dump on them later on, or vice versa, drag in some sellers and then rally and you know, really clean them up on the upside. So it can easily do that. If it holds below potentially this level here, uh, what is that, 22, 230, say, then holds below and we hold a lower height, then I'll be selling into that and see if we can break back below that 22.082. There's a major level on the downside. Now, on a daily chart, this move here could just be a flush of a daily low. So just be wary that it can ramp up. It has been in a downtrend for quite a while. All right, the Nikkei, like I said, you know, dumped on uh, the open US session and it held, it sort of dropped below that 26.430, then popped up below it then kept getting pressure you know, back below that level. So it was trying to hold below that level. We've got a major support zone at 26.265. So just be looking for any sort of push into that zone, see if it can hold, or if it doesn't go anywhere near that, we might see a bit of a ramp up, maybe a lower high back off this area again, or we sort of could ramp up. It's a good setup for some short squeeze. Okay, some shorts are stacked up, shorts off here, a lot of stacked up. We could easily just do this kind of action, hold that level and ramp up and squeeze them all out. Okay, Dow, uh, the Dow held below that 34 double, oh, sorry, 055, held below that level, held some lower highs, um, sorry, held a lower high into that level. So it broke back below, retested it, and that was late in the session. So this was, I think, earlier. So it was the start of the US session. 
ramped up in for, uh, into that level. So you know that the market's going to do that. It's going to set up something you know, prior to the open and it set up the longs, squeeze them, and it would have taken some stops. People would have got traded into a long position with stops below here. It's quite obvious. And they've just been stopped out. Okay, so it was a bit of a trap set on the open, sold back down again, and then we retested it and sold back down. So potentially that level is going to hold. I wouldn't expect a lot. I won't be probably looking at this too much on the Dow prior to the payroll level because I think you're just going to be whipped. Uh, the market's going to be waiting to see what happens on those payroll numbers. Okay, are they going to be really strong, stronger than expected? So there's more pressure on inflation and rate rises and the market will probably head off, head lower. Or are they going to be weaker, which means that potentially we're not looking at the sort of rate rises we're expecting. And maybe that's what Powell was alluding to. He's, um, a lot of people were thinking two rate rises, you know, give it a good nudge two rate rises, but he said, basically, we're not going to be aggressive. And they are standing by that. They'd rather see higher inflation, uh, but try to keep it in in control, under control at higher levels, as opposed to knocking it down with, you know, half a percent rate rise. Okay, so that's their last thing they want to do is create havoc into the share market, being it so highs. All right. Um, here we've got US tech, NASDAQ. You can see that little pump up into the open and then drop. Okay, so the same sort of scenario. We've got this bit of a setup, bit of a trap, trapped in some buyers through that level, took out some stops who had to buy into the market. That would have traded into some liquidity. Potentially, you know, we've got some bigger boys here above that level. Some algos are just having, having their resting sell orders above their level. Got traded into it and they got pushed it down again, back down to this level, 13.4940. So again, like the um, Dow, I don't expect it to be any, I would expect this sort of range to hold 14,320 and 13,940 into the payroll level. So into the payroll release. Um, we'll wait and see what happens, but I think if it could easily flush below there and bounce back into that level. So just be careful if you're gonna sell on the break here, prior to that happening, that we don't get a break back above. Okay, and the same sort of scenario, we're gonna trap uh, trap with some, with some shorts, trap some shorts in here and bounce back and squeeze them back out. Uh, the DAX, looking at the DAX, that had a bit of a breakdown, um, start of the US session again. Bit of a sell-off. It couldn't obviously the US couldn't hold a, a hold a level. Got sold back down again, and you can see the DAX is um, well and truly in a downtrend here. You got some lower highs back in play around in here, this zone in here, which is probably what 14060, 065, off that 1420 sort of breakout level, 14200. It's like I said, it's in a downtrend. I think the pressure's down at the moment. I won't be selling down here. Wouldn't be doing anything until the open of the US. I think was with that key number coming, it's potentially just a lot of long positions getting flushed out of the market. Okay, longs off here, longs off here, longs off this high low, got flushed out prior to um, the US number because, like I said, inflation is still a big thing. Well, it is a big thing. It's just back really on the radar with a lot of traders. Uh, FTSE really smashed. <laughs> you can say that's pretty. I don't know another word for that. Uh, sold off quite hard. Okay, or in other terms, smashed. So I've got um, a bit of a pullback here from this downtrend, pullback off this level, 73.06, double top, retest fail, and then got dumped. And that was right from the start of the European session. Okay, it was pretty much all one-way action into that support zone at 72.39. So whether they're factoring in higher rates too, um, is yet to be seen. The, the trend is still down. This is a level where it extended that level 72.39 before, and it looks like there's a potential for it to well hold that level. It's just, this is kind of a wide uh, area. This is your lower high. Your, your retest fail potentially, but that retest fail is not confirmed until, not confirmed until that 72.85, which is the high of that box is broken. Okay, so it could remain in that box, chop around, break down. Okay, so don't get too excited about buying that because it's extended down. It could easily go lower. Aussie, Aussie dollar finding a good little bid on um, commodity prices, I'm guessing. Uh, nice um, move up off that 72.47, held, sort of pushed back into that 72.82. I think we were talking about that a while ago. It's obviously the scenario would be if it, you push up above, you're either looking for that retracement and a lower high, or you're looking for that retest of the level and hold, which it did, and it's been holding high lows since. So it's in a nice little uptrend at the moment. Uh, where we're going to, we'll just look at a, a bigger chart. Go to a four hourly chart here. Okay, so it's taken out this high here, which I haven't got marked up, which I probably should have. An extension level up there. Then you've got these levels, you know, up at around 73.68. So it could easily extend on that today. It's just broken up and through, and it seems to be holding at this stage. Back to a 15. 
seems to be holding this zone through here at 73.14. So I'll be looking for, if anything, I'm going to be biased up on this. Just look for a bit of a flush. It could hold this level in here. Okay, it could. that's a big pullback there. It could hold that. It could sort of flush down, take out this. It gets some drags and some sellers and then turns around and squeezes them out. So just be wary of a pullback on that. Uh, Euro, US dollar rallying. Uh, like I said, inflation is the key thing at the moment for the US dollar. It's not really a safe haven bid. It's more back to inflation and US dollar being the favoured currency over, say, the Euro. So it's got that um, FX trans, what you call it, FX differential, okay, between, say, US Euro, US Aussie, all that sort of stuff. So if with the US dollar being that they're, they're looking further and further ahead to US dollar um, to inflation and rate rises, US dollar are going to get a better yield for interest rates than any other currency. So it's been favoured over the euro, which is what why it's getting sold off. And the pound also, and probably not so much the Aussie because it's actually going up anyway, but that's finding its own buying for a different reason. Okay, so um, euro heading south held that 111.27 level and it looks like it's going lower from here. The pound, the pound, we were talking about this last few days, you know, held up here, held up, held up. So you've got all these little spikes into this into this low. Okay, we'll just draw that at low up, into this low in here, this spikes into that level, which is held. Okay, held this little spike here, held another spike, but it's holding a lower high. So just be wary that you're not gonna go and, okay, we'll just buy in that and it sort of pops up and then dumps. Okay, because this is a lower high. Yeah, 13, 34.07. So for me, that's a key level. If we're going to hold this level, we're going to break up and through that and we're going to extend. So basically, you'd probably be looking at maybe something like that. You drive up and if it's off this level, we're going to drive up to that 34.40 area. Okay, but if it's going to hold, you're just going to continue these little lower highs and you're probably going to hold uh, this little minor level here at around 33.58. But I wouldn't, like I said, I wouldn't be touching that uh, until payrolls because the pound could, if it wants to go higher, it'll set up some shorts to squeeze out. If it wants to go lower, it can set up some long. So if it wants to go lower from here, it'll probably grind its way back up. And you've got a long leg down here, which hasn't, you know, generally when you've got an expansion leg like that, you totally get the, the move back up in two phases. Okay, one, two, maybe back up into 33.72, then I might be looking for a short there. Okay, the US yen, safe haven bids probably, you know, still come out of that uh, a bit. You got the US dollar rallying as well, so you got some selling into the yen and some bit of buying back into the US dollar. Uh, was buying into the US dollar before, but it was more of a safe haven bid um, move, uh, exit out of that safe haven bid. But um, for now, US markets they reversed some of the move up on the indices, so it was up quite a bit. Now we got down last night, so maybe it's finding a bit of yen buying, but there's really no reason to buy that. It's more. Probably even if the yen went sideways, US dollars going up, so it's putting pressure on this currency. All right, so we're looking at um, that level holding 115.64. Potentially, it's just starting to break an anchor through here to a move up. Okay, which is around 115.47. We might get a bit of a pop up. Well, I'm probably looking for maybe something like this, bit of a lower move, and if it wants to go down, something like that. But again, this is going to be US dollar based, and we've got payrolls coming out. Um, I'll be sort of steering clear of this for a while. I mean, it could just be, it's going to be choppy. You've got a nice extension leg down here, a bit like what we're talking, I think, on the pound, the FTSE. Anyway, it's got an extension leg, so I can do up in two waves before it starts to head south. Gold, now gold actually looks pretty good. Problem is, it gets played around with the US. Coming into European Open and US Open, it can chop around and it could, you know, it looks like a buy, it'll squeeze down. It looks like a sell, it'll squeeze up. Uh, Elgo's just like to play it with a thin market outside of ours. All right, so this is kind of what I'd be looking for. I would like to see this, I would like to see ideally 1923 hold. I don't mind if it starts to come down, comes down again, flushes, even retest that area, but I'll be looking for a higher low, either you know something like this or potentially into the level, maybe a higher low like that. And that would probably take us into the start of the European session, get a higher low to work off. You get a nice little long uh, 1923 could hold. And I looked at that extension to 1973, but either way, you can see that action looks really primed. Crude oil. All right, some buying. Um, you just got a bit of a, a long squeeze. So any of these longs have been built up for quite a while. Bit of a squeeze of uh, the longs, squeezing back out. As you get through, you know, 110 is a key area. You know, on the, the the more key the area, the more important that area, the, the bigger the level, uh, you're going to get those flushes. Okay, we're going to get stops triggered. People get triggered in. Retail gets triggered in. They turn around and squeeze them straight back out on a pullback. 
maybe a deeper correction, hold a higher low, and then we go again, go higher through 110. It could easily hold in here, um, but it's, you know, they, they might just hold that level and start to ramp up again. Um, we'll have to wait and see. You've got sort of these minor levels just in here around, was it 105.40 and somewhere around that 107.60 area. Okay, so at the moment, it's in a downtrend. I'm not looking to trade that. I mean, I don't really trade it much anyway, but if I wanted to trade that, I'd be looking for, you know, maybe a flush of that level and then bounce and look to see if I can hold and a higher low, work a higher low off it. Okay, you always want to be working higher low after that level's proved itself. And the same, you know, down here at 105.60. All right, copper. Quickly look at copper. It's extended. I mean, that looks to me like it's it's really finding a bid and it wants to go higher. Okay, that kind of move there through a key level, uh, key highs. It could easily do this. You know, it's just push. It could easily pop up through that high and then fail and squeeze out some traders on a pullback. Or it could just as easily go higher. Okay, you want, if it's going to go high, I wouldn't mind to see a, a retest of that, holding and then going. Okay, and then looking for a long. Again, I don't think that's going to happen until we hit the US session. And don't forget, US dollar, it's linked to the US dollar um, at the moment. So any sharp US dollar rally is probably going to put pressure on, on copper. But for now, commodities are doing quite well. Ethereum and Bitcoin. Ethereum first. So um, we're looking at really what I'm, I'm what I'm seeing here. It's just coming to that support. It's sort of flushed into that support at 28.25. Do we get a bit of a pop and then another lower high to take us down to 27.48 uh, to work a short off, or do we get this kind of action? You know, pop back above. If it comes back above significantly and starts to retest and hold, look for a higher loan and move back up to 30 36. Uh, but for now, we could eat, we could still hold that level. So it's kind of, that's the key level. It's obvious that that's the key level today. If we chop around and we can go lower from here, holding a lower high. Uh, Bitcoin, last thing we look at, I would expect it maybe a push to 43 before we can get a short off that and maybe a lower high. I, I think it's sort of in la la land between you know, 4,900 and 43,000. At the moment, I don't want to trade anything just in here. I want to see either pop up here, retest and that fail for a deeper move down. Or you know, it could just grind down here, continue to grind down here, and look for a potential for a long off that level as we get some buyers get excited again. Um, there's still quite a bit of, you can see this move up from say 35 to 45, essentially, um, 10,000 point move, $10,000 move, it really hasn't squeezed out too many. Okay, so there's obviously some selling coming in here. We're looking to squeeze some of this leg up. Okay, this is a good leg up. It's only retraced probably not even half of that move. So it could easily jam into this 49. It's probably a, a 50% move. All right, that's um, all I want to look at. We'll keep it. We'll keep it short. Well, not really short and simple there. 17 minutes. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that, guys. I hope you um, you can get some value out of that. And if you do, it'd be great if you can uh, leave us a like on our YouTube channel. Uh, that'll be a trade the structure. Take a look at that. <clears throat> Take a look around. If not, look at our website. Um, look at my website at www.tradethestructure.com. All right, guys. Enjoy. Stay safe and have a good weekend.